Hello again and welcome back. In this final lecture in section two, we are going to focus on some common pitfalls that I see from a number of uh, my Skype students and in writing corrections. Um, so we're looking at three common mistakes to avoid uh, in IELTS writing task one. And the first of those mistakes is interpreting the data. It's very important that you only present the data and you do not try to explain why the data is the way that it is. Now we're going to look at this really simple bar chart here and this is, you know, it's obviously a very simplified chart. You're unlikely to see something quite this simple in your task, but it serves a purpose as to illustrate um, the importance of not interpreting the data. So this graph shows how many PS4s were sold compared to Xbox Ones over four months. And those are two video game consoles for anybody who might not be aware. So it might be tempting to say that customers thought that the PS4 video game console was superior to the Xbox One console. And uh, maybe it's even true, I don't know. But this is an interpretation and not a fact supported by the data on the screen. Now, you need to be careful with this because some language that uh, candidates use, they think the things that they're saying are not really interpreting the data, but sometimes it is. So make sure that you only present and that you do not try to explain or interpret the data. The second mistake is when people either write an overview and a conclusion or they write neither. So this is a real problem and we mentioned this a little bit earlier. The band descriptors for task achievement in task one state that in order to achieve a band seven, the candidate presents a clear overview of main trends, differences or stages. Even for band six, the requirement is to present a clear overview with information appropriately selected. So an overview basically is not optional. It's a requirement of band seven writing. It's a requirement of band six writing, and it must be clear within your response. Some people like to write a summary and that's okay. But as long as this is a paragraph which contains the main trends, differences or stages, and the paragraph comes in a logical position, then this also meets the band seven requirements. Just make sure not to write both. The final mistake is when candidates try to include everything. Now this is only a mistake depending on the type of graph or image that you receive, because sometimes it is possible to include a description of all the data, but most of the time it is not possible to include all of the data. Try not to put yourself under pressure to cover every single figure for every single category in the graph. A lot of the time this takes too long and is a huge waste of the valuable time that you have, um, also taking time away from task two as well. The requirements state that you need to present and highlight key features. And this is a skill uh, which we'll be looking at later. And the skill is really about identifying what those key features are. Key features, the expression key features does not mean everything. Otherwise, it wouldn't be key. So make sure you're trying to identify the key features when you've got um, a graph which contains a lot of data and then only presenting those key features clearly and leaving out anything which is not uh, so important. And that takes us to the end of section two. So when you return to the next lecture, we'll get started on section three, which is about addressing band descriptor requirements for task achievement. See you there.